Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be posting a training guide for level 200 to 250 after the Neo update. Now for these guides, I want you guys to keep in mind that they're not definite. So you guys have to test out what maps work best for you and what setup works best for you. I'm just giving you options. And as always, make sure to subscribe for future videos. I'll be posting a 250 to 275 guide after this and possibly a 275 to 300 guide when uh, Hotel Arcus comes out. So stay tuned. So we're starting off in Vanishing Journey, the first area in the whole arcane region. So the first area that I would go to for level 200 to 205 is the Weatherland of Rage. And here, if you have a Frenzy, it tends to be quite a good of a spawn. And let me just turn the volume down a bit because it's getting pretty loud. For so. People usually just go in like some sort of a X direction where they just you know hit these platforms, go down, and then they could go back up and you just could jump diagonally and then just continue to repeat the process and go back down. Whatever works best for your class. And the next map that we have is the Weather Land of Sorrow. So in this map, it's similar to the the Raging Erdos, where it's a very similar layout with just a slightly longer platform so you can actually get to the other side if your class has the, that ability and you can just basically make a circle around the whole map and yeah it's a pretty good spawn again if you have any sort of frenzy or spawn enhancers. And the next map we have is Spirit Zone which is up here. Now this map is slightly bigger and the spawn is more sparse but if you have uh, a class like mine you can basically let me use this rune you can basically set up a summon on the top and then you can basically go across the map from left to right and you'll be able to actually get pretty decent EXP here now if you don't like the arcane region, you can always go to the dark world tree and this is one of the recommended maps for I guess level 200 to 210. I trained some of my 200 to 210 mules here and what you basically do is just spawn, uh, smack the spawn across you know left to right and if you're a Lumi you can basically just stand up top and use reflection and they'll reflect down three levels. So make sure you guys test out which map works best for your class, run battle analysis, and see which gives you the better EXP rate per second or minute, whatever the, the rate is. So because each class is going to be different. So next we can enter either Reverse City or we can continue on to VJ. So the first map in VJ that I want to show you for level 200 to 210 is the Western Cave Path 2. This I think is a pretty fantastic map if you have a uh, lower arcane force because you can spawn frenzy here and you just go left to right. Um, doesn't work too well for my class but for Evans I know this map works really well because you can just keep teleporting, keep teleporting left and right here and they'll basically kill off most of the mobs. Now a similar map if you prefer another option is the Eastern Cave Path 2. Very similar to the other one, but this one just has a slightly shorter platform, but again, it's very similar. So these can basically be used interchangeably. And if you're a zero, you're basically going to be standing on the top here, sending your tornadoes over towards that way, and then you send another tornado towards that way and then you just loot every now and then. It should reach somewhat towards the end, although you do want to clean up towards the latter part. And now we go to Below the Cave. Below the Cave is a fantastic option, but it's usually always full. It's basically the same as the other two maps that I showed you previously, and you just go left to right, left to right, left to right, and you just use whatever mobbing skill you have, and you can basically use the spawn teleporter and come back to this side as well. Now obviously I'm not going to kill here because I don't want to KS this guy. But you get the point. 
It's a very similar concept to the previous two maps. And now we enter Reverse City. So Reverse City, I don't really like the maps that much. Uh, the only maps that I really like or are somewhat a fond, fond of is Train 1. And I train my Phantom here. Oh, Monster Collection. Nice. Uh, basically, same concept as the Eastern Cape Fab 2. I think these give more EXP than the VJ mobs, but it requires slightly higher arcane power, um, I think. And you just go left to right again. And then there's that third platform on the top right that might be an issue if you're a class that can hit there. Maybe put a summon there if you guys have a summon. And next we have a very similar map again. And that's T-Boy Research Train 3. So here, it's again, very similar map. You just go left to right. It's a very small map, and if you have a Frenzy, it's again, going to be very compact and rapid spawn. So it's a pretty nice map overall. The other maps, I don't really like, so you really don't have to do much pre-quest to get all the way to the end. It's pretty pointless in my opinion, but the option's there if you guys want to do it. I wouldn't do it. Anyways, next we have 210 to 215, and for this area, we enter Torrent Zone 3. Torrent Zone 3 is one of my favorite maps from back when I was in Choo Choo, just because you can just do a blade burst, and then you just keep traveling along. It makes training more interactive because you're able to kind of play with the, the water flow a bit, and... Yeah, same concept really, left to right, left to right, and yeah. For some classes, this is actually a horrible map, but for my class, it's actually not too terrible. And next we have Torrent Zone 1. So for Torrent Zone 1, it's basically the same thing as the other one that I just showed you. You use the waterfall to carry you from left to right, and just kill, and then you TP over. And then you do the same thing, and you repeat the process. And next we have Model Force 3, if I can find it. Okay, so this one right here. Bear me on some of these because I'm not familiar with their map names, especially because I don't train here too often, and it's been ages since I've been here. But here, same concept. It's similar to Eastern Cave Path 2 and Western Cave Path 2. You just basically go left to right, and there are two big... Well, two levels of platform, one on the top, one on the bottom, and you just keep going left to right, left to right, left to right. Uh, pretty good for Evan classes because you're able to just teleport and you don't have to get stuck on possibly jumping on this platform. But overall, this is a very good map to train in for anybody who is similar to my class. And now we move on to mod uh, Deity Bobber Force 1. Man, some of these names are crazy. I don't even know how they come out with this. Anyways, for this map, this is actually very bad for certain classes, but extremely well for classes like Zero, because your Zero Tornadoes are able to reach from this side all the way to the other side and able to hit this platform and also the, the platform above it as well. So you basically just Use your tornadoes here, use your tornadoes here, and then you go back up, and you go back down, same thing. Fantastic map for zeros, but also a decent map for other classes. Again, try your BA, see how it, how it is. And next we have Biddy Bobble Force 1, and that's this map right here. So for this map, it's similar to the Eastern Cave Path 2 map. And also the Model Forest 3 map, just a lot smaller. And you're able to just basically go same thing left to right. And if you're a class with summons, you can always drop your summon on here. And then pop maybe like a Lucis Soul, or if you have another summon, you can just pop it here. And then you can just focus killing on this side and just resummon every now and then. So it's a pretty fantastic map in my opinion. And if I had a choice, I would definitely train here, but I'm way past this level. Next map, we have the somewhat infamous Slurpee Forest Death. Now this is the CLP of Choo Choo essentially. It used to be a lot more packed back when um, we didn't have the new area 
uh, Yum Yum Island. And this map is very compact, very nice. Uh, you can go in sort of a circular rotation, or you can also just basically jump uh, left to right and then go down in some sort of an S shape. Uh, whatever works best for your class. I know Xkana do fantastic here and basically can fall map clear. Zeros are very bad here because just the way the map is set up is very weird for zeros and you have to do a lot more movement than otherwise uh, needed. Anyways, now we get to 215 to 220 and we're able to enter Yum Yum Island. So for Yum Yum Island, there are three maps that I really like. The first one is Mushbud Forest 5. And that's right here. Again, similar concept. It's a very horizontal map with decent platform. You just go left to right and they have pretty nice hitboxes so you're able to reach them pretty easily. And again, if you are a class with summons, spawn the summons on the top. And then you can just clear the bottom two platforms pretty easily. I think Evans do pretty well here too because of just how their range is set up. Anyways, next we have the Hidden Mushbutt Forest, which is this map right here. This map is essentially the same as the other map, except there are more platforms. So this is pretty good if your class can reach all three platforms. Uh, if you're a Pathfinder, you can probably summon your Lucis Soul here on the right side. And you can probably just do your main attack here and it should hit all three platforms. Or same thing for Adele I guess. Works well for Adele's too. Next we have the pretty popular Hidden Iliot Forest or Hidden Iliot Field. Very compact map, very nice. Very similar to a CLP but more horizontal and bigger. I know classes that just stay in towards the middle like Adele's and they can just hit you know all three levels. Pretty nice map but for me I will have to utilize my summons and probably travel left to right a bit. But again try what, try what best works for your class as every class is going to be different. And next we move on to 220 to 225 area. So now we're into Lachlan. And the first map we're going to go through is Chicken F Festival 1. So this map is good for classes that can have some sort of summon on the top because this platform is very hard to reach unless you have huge horizontal range. And you just move basically left to right. Uh, again, if you have another summon like over here, that will work as well. And you just shorten the range that you have to move from left to right. So it's a pretty nice and compact map. And then next we move one map over to Chicken uh, Festival 2. So same concept here, move left to right, left to right, and very bare bone basic setup. Two levels of platform and you just move left to right, left to right. Next we move on to Revelation Place 2. This map is pretty good for certain classes, but terrible for others. So for me, terrible map. For Zeros, fantastic map. Zeros are able to reach basically all of the platforms. Uh, if you have a Lucid Soul versus Zero, you can put it here and spawn it. And then spawn your Tornadoes and send them over that way. And then that way, and then come down, do the same thing and this should basically full map clear. And next we move on to a map that's more fitting for my class and this map probably has people in it and it does. So let me just call the elite real quick. So basically in this map it's a very small and compact map. You can put your summon here like a lucid soul and this should help clear out this side of the equation. And then you just focus on moving left to right, left to right, left to right around this area right here. Your skill should be able to hit the 
the top right platform, but if it doesn't, put another summon there if you have it, otherwise you just have to do more movements. And next we should go to the final map for Lachalan. And this map is Occupy Dance Floor 2. This map is horrendous if you don't one-shot, because these mobs one-shot, not one-shot you, they stun you. So it gets quite annoying, but for zeros, it's actually a very fantastic map. The reason being is you can send a tornado towards that way. See, I just got stunned right there. And then you send another tornado towards that way. And then you go back up, and you send another tornado. And the tornado takes care of the bottom two platforms as well as the top platform and the drift off will hit the side right here. Fantastic map for zero, it's very underrated and yeah, definitely try it out. And I guess as well as any class that can reach the top third level platform. And now we move on to the forest of earth. We're entering what I think is one of the best regions of the arcane river. Forest of Earth usually has people, not surprisingly, uh, and you just basically move left to right to, you know, kill mobs, and if you have trouble hitting the top, summon a Lucis Soul either in the middle here, or you can summon your a summon on the top here, and you should be able to do fantastic. Next, we move on to Between the Frost and Thunder 2. This map I actually used to train in, and it's actually a very underrated map, especially for classes with Teleport, like Fire, Poison, Mage, and Evans. Evans are fantastic up here, honestly, because you're able to just move left and right pretty easily. So for those of you who cannot get to the deeper regions of Arcane River and you guys get better EXP here because you guys are able to one-shot, definitely try this map out. It's very underrated and I think it's a super fantastic map honestly. And now we move on to the infamous CLP, Cavern Lower Path. I can bet money there's people here already. So here, very simple. If you're a Pathfinder, you're gonna love it. Adele's, you're gonna love it. Stay in the middle like this guy's doing. Send left and right, left and right, left and right, and then you just spawn your shits, and you're basically able to have a field day. And maybe put your summon here, or you can also put your summons on wherever your main attack doesn't hit, I guess. Anyways, so yeah, have fun, CLP. Extremely annoying to find a map here so yeah enjoy it and then now if it's full I will suggest moving to lower path 2 lower path 2 very nice map very nice and short uh, let me just reply real quick so basically same concept left to right left to right left to right very nice and compact map. I think anybody who has a decent spawn summon um, can basically train here. You can also jump down and it'll bring you to the other side. And you can just move from left to right, left to right, and then you just repeat the process. It's very similar to Below the Cave and the other VJ maps I showed you. And then now we move on to the brother of Lower Path 2, and that is Lower Path 1. Lower Path 1, put your summon here if you have one, otherwise just go left to right again. It's very flat, just like all the other Arcana region maps, and you just go left to right, left to right, and you're basically able to clear this whole map, essentially. And you can jump down, and it'll bring you to the top. Now we move on to Labyrinthine Cavern. This map I think is pretty good for classes that are able to stand here and do damage towards both the left and right side. It's similar to Lower Path 2, but it's just longer and wider. The mob spawn is not as good here, 
but it's a pretty nice map overall and I definitely suggest you try it and see how it is because I don't know I personally enjoy it anyways now we move on to the infamous zero map there are a lot of infamous maps in Arcana oh look there's nobody nope there's somebody here and look at that it's a zero what do you know so basically for this map perfect for zeros do I need to say more probably not honestly I've said enough on my zero series send your tornadoes over drop down send your tornadoes over again and then repeat the process any class that can reach the top platform as well like a Kana or something can probably still train here pretty nicely but you know Definitely the infamous zero map. Now we move on to Labyrinthine Cavern side path. This is the infamous Kana map because of the match spawn and how Kanas are basically able to clear the whole map. They basically can spawn uh, a bunch of summons and they'll basically take care of all four platforms. Very nice and easy map and if you're not a Kana I don't know why you want to do this to yourself, this map is very shitty for me and I guess most other classes, but try it out, see how it is, it's just another option. Now we move on to the Deep in the Cavern Upper Path 2. This is one of the options for I guess mechanics, I've seen mechanics train here because of the mass summons that they have. I think it's pretty decent for Kaisers and uh, any other class of summons as well and you guys are probably sick of me saying summons by now. But, it is what it is because summons for training is just too OP, honestly. Terrible map for me uh, because it's just too big, but I think some classes do well in it. Zeros can probably do decent in it if the other option is full, but yeah, try it out. Uh, next, we move on to the only decent map. For the morass region this map is literally it honestly stay the fucking arcana there is no point in coming to morass it's just a tragic region i don't know why it exists but it does probably exists for kms but terrible map for gms i can see this map being potentially decent if all other options were just somehow miraculously full but I don't see a point in training here. It's just a really big pain in the behind. But if you guys just love the setting for whatever reason and you guys want to explore the morass region, by all means. I wouldn't want to do this to myself, just stay in Arcana, but by all means. Next, we move on to Asphera. Asphera. Not the best training region by any means. I think Arcana setups are way better, but it's definitely an option for the stronger players if they want to move on. Basically, your rotation is basically just going to be clockwise or counterclockwise, and you just move throughout. You guys can also plot your summons on certain platforms, like I think if you summon your Lucid here, I should be able to hit the top 2 platform, put another summon here, and then you can focus on just killing this part of the map. Pretty decent map uh, overall. Try it, and then let me know how it goes. Now we move on to the somewhat infamous MTS3. There is always somebody farming here for some reason. I don't know why. It's really not the best map, but you know, if you have summons, throw it here, put a Lucid Soul here, maybe put another summon here if you guys have it, otherwise just same concept, go left and right, left and right, and then go up here, and then go up here, and then do this. Same thing here, nothing too fancy. I'm not even KSing you bro, uh, literally just, you're not even killing, alright? I've been here for like five seconds. Super sensitive. Anyways, now we move on to the next map that I like is MTS4. And for MTS4, it's very similar rotation where you basically just move left to right, 
and then you go up, and then you slap that, and then you go up, if you fall down again, slap that, come back down. You know, some classes do well here. Experiment what works for your class and what doesn't work. I can only recommend maps. And once you hit 240, congratulations, you've reached Celis. So, for Celis, first map we're gonna go to, Final Edge of Light 4. Pretty horizontal map, quite nice. I quite like the vibes of it. As always, if you have a summon, put it in the top. Otherwise, you're just forced jumping in basically a semicircle or oh not semicircle, basically clockwise or counterclockwise. And you just repeat the process for a bit, I guess. And next we move on to Plunging Depths 1. If you want to switch the brightness of your Maple Story settings and go a bit darker, this is a perfect setup for you. Same thing as the final edge of light that I just showed you. Go clockwise or counterclockwise. If you have summons, you guys can put it on the top, like for Kaisers. So you can put your summon here, put your summon here, drop a Lucid Soul here if you want, and then you just go through the bottom platform and you're in business. Next we move on to another Plunging Depths, Plunging Depths 4. This is better for classes with more vertical reach because of more platforms. It's smaller in terms of horizontal uh, length, but it is taller. So this is good for classes with skills that can clear tall maps. And then now we move on to the CLP of Celis, and that is Star Swallowing C1. These maps are usually full and I'm willing to put my money on it. Somebody's gonna come back and tell me CC. Same concept as CLP, you can stand in this area right here and use your skill and it should hit top three platforms and maybe put up a loose soul around here and you'll be able to clear the right side. But for classes that aren't as lucky and you guys have to move, you guys can just move clockwise or counterclockwise and you guys should be good. No big deal. Next, we move on to another alternative if all those maps are full and not to your liking. So for this map, it's Star Swallowing C4. It's a bit bigger than Star Swallowing C1, so it's good for classes that want to move around more and like to move around more. These are slightly high, higher level than Plunging Depths and Final Edge of Light. And you guys can basically stay here until all the way 255 if you guys really want to. But most people just stay here until 250 or 245. Uh, again, test out what maps and EXP rates work best for you. Once you hit 245, you're welcomed into Moonbridge. And the first map that we're going to talk about is Last Horizon 2. Now this map, very horizontal. Good for classes that have high vertical reach as well. It's one of the more compact maps in Moonbridge, but overall Moonbridge maps layouts are not the best. This is really the best one I could find in this whole area, so yeah, I'm sorry if you guys don't like it. <laughs> best I could do. But yeah, essentially just go around the circle, maybe pop a summon on the top left if you guys have it, and then just move in a circle rotation and you guys should be good. For those of you who like the bigger maps, like those of you in Reboot, and you guys only have Kishin or Wild Totem, Mysterious Fog 2 is a great alternative option. Now, this requires a bigger, I guess, bigger mob clearing ability, similar to Kana's, because you guys do have to move around a bit, and the map is actually quite big. But again, just go around in a circle, and you'll be good. Now we move on to Void Current 1. 
And then this area, it's pretty nice, honestly. You just go around in that region. With Frenzy, the spawn here is really good. And you just go around in the circle. And same thing as the other maps. Pretty good EXP here if you're able to kill the full map. The more you kill, the better it is. And these monsters have ginormous hitboxes. So you're pretty much set. Now if you like a slightly more organized map, but you know, you just have to move around quite a bit for this. Void Current 3 is another popular option. You guys can basically just move around from left to right and right to left in a circle and you'll be good. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be posting the next part of this guide for 250 to 275 in a few days. So make sure to subscribe for future content and turn on that notification bell. I'll see you next video.